where we're working with next, what we can do. Fringe used to be the sort of this is where you cut your teeth and grow. Um, fringe now is um, very much a, a commodity in business on its own. If you've got a good show, you can travel the world with your show and make money with your show um, year round, wherever you are. Right, I'm trying to stay too long. Um, celebrate difference. Um, I think it's really important that the thing that Fringe does so well is to celebrate difference in our communities. And that might be difference in terms of diversity, it might be difference in terms of the readers that don't get their voice heard, or that sort of odd ball that doesn't quite get in with the local established organisations. Fringe is where you can present those sort of things. So celebrate difference in that way, hearing voices from all parts of your community. Your festival will grow if you're involved in your community. Your um, it's an odd place that it is. <laughs> celebrate that and you can work for that. And actually the fringe is one of those organisations that can help that connect across the system if you go through it, so if you're really proud to do it. Um, and the last one is just look after yourself on the fringe, which I think is really important. Um, my last slide I'm just going to make my own okay. uh, my mum still makes me every year fringe survival kits <laughs> which has pants and socks and boots and toothpaste and yes. yeah she's very really sweet. But it's really important, you know, you can kill yourself to it. You will tie yourself out. It's very important to look after yourself. You look after yourself and um, you will look after each other. Sorry that wasn't so as pretty as I thought. I can show some slides while we have a break. But, um, Good, let's do that then. Um, there's some questions that have come from the fringe board. Uh, there's some people, and there's some people who have maybe got questions. We can start with those. Uh, it says you've got an art students that don't hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> it says well, you want to speak about the community you're in. And I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And some fringes are, are put on places that someone decides someone wishes to have a fringe, but mm -hmm. they don't work. Mm -hmm. um, the fringe organisation, most people are just like, oh, but it wouldn't really be here without content. <laughs> you've got to be making the work. So it's, it's, they're there to guide you, to support you through making your work and it to your work. And and the stage of productions. It's, um, it's very organic, so I think it's a really healthy sign of the city if they've got a fringe in there. Um, so it's good you've got one, I swear. <laughs> and it's early days, you do amazing work uh, for, for such a, a new festival mm -hmm. as we've seen. So. There's an organisation called World Fringe Network and World Fringe Alliance who link with fringes. Just so that ability to link up is vital, I think, going on. Particularly if, you're, uh, if you've got a, a Play on the stage and here for four or five days or three days, whatever. And it makes absolute sense to go somewhere else for three days. Mm -hmm. so, you know, those networks can be very beneficial. Yeah, there's talk of uh, internet. There's several uh, fringe networks. There's a Canadian fringe network and an American fringe network. But there's talk of a, a UK fringe network because there's more fringes in the UK than anywhere else. We own fringe, yeah. 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 So there's the possibility that through that UK network, There's a lot more, there's prizes in Fringe as well, they're trying to get down here where they support work for, um, for there's an award in Edinburgh that takes a company to the New York Fringe, um, <coughs> Brighton Fringe, or South, uh, there's a Fringe in South Africa, or Grahamstown Arts Festival, which is sort of the Fringe Festival. Mm -hmm. um, it's a key group. It's fair, yeah. Once you're in, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but they can, you know, those awards are there and they're, link, they're seeing the benefit of linking up and sharing work. There's, the, you know, your work can resonate here, but if you're, where's the other side? Sorry, I don't know if you're on my way. Your work resonates worldwide, there's no reason for that to do that, so it's quite easy for that to be trapped.
I have a question. Hi. Uh, acoustics aren't very good, so you may already have answered my question before I ask it. Uh, to, looking at the Brighton Fringe, about how long has it been going on, and about how big is it in terms of the overall budgets, and, and where does it source its funding from? How much of it is commercial business sponsorship? Yeah, so the uh, festival has been running under various guises. The festival was actually started by the International Festival, it was called the Umbrella, um, and then it broke out, um, and then there was a lot of infighting, um, and then we ended up with a one year of really the Brighton Festival Fringe and the Brighton Fringe Festival, which so was at the same time, uh, which is pretty really confusing for everyone. And that was about 15 years ago, so it runs every year. Um, it's been in its current form eight, nine years as Brighton Fringe. The core organisation, which is the, they've got a managing director, a marketing person, a box office, and they sell the tickets and they make money with that and they charge the artists. They're a charity that don't get arts council funding or anything like that. Um, they, so they look after their own, but they have to make their money from the other, from the performers and the visitors to Brighton Fringe. Every venue then funds itself in different ways. So we, at other places, I'm one of five directors, and, and we don't, uh, there's no funding that comes in, and we haven't got our own money, and we charge our artists a guarantee to book a slot. So we had 150 visiting theatre companies this year, um, of which they paid, they guaranteed us 20% uh, roughly ticket sales, but they would achieve more than that. So it's a good way of balancing risk between us and them. We have to build the theatre, they have to build the show, but if they decide not to market it, we've got a guarantee. And that funding helps us to build the spaces, and then we flog beer to their customers, their audiences, when they're there. I think our bar tokens are probably one of the most common worldwide ways of funding. Oh, and your bar. Do not borrow yeah. a bar tokens. We're one of the very few fringes in the UK that get arts council funding. Mm. Keep that, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I think the bar, so roughly last year, three other places, um, <laughs> half of Income coming in, not all of our money, so it was the artists, was ticket sales, and half of it was bar sales. So they've always been really half and half in terms of the money that's coming through. Um, it's vital to run a, run a bar with it, I think. But it's also about that philosophy of I don't want people to see a show and leave, I want them to come and talk afterwards with people who've seen the show, recommend the next show to go to, and meet the artists afterwards and talk. So actually, that's quite an you know, alcohol lubricant. We also sell soft drinks at the food. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 the question, the line of questioning can go on forever around that. I mean, if, if, if the bar sales are the critical component, then one model would be you find people who make their money from, um, from bar sales to pay you to have an event in their venue. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, there, are, there are many ways of 